stuff there is uh, in like in this game, but also I just adore. Hold on, go check if I'm going the right way. Not only just how much side stuff there is, but uh, specifically all the videos of just Doctor Darling trying to like teach people shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I accidentally hit the go button. So welcome to Lone Night Gaming. He's talking about control, by the way. Yeah, sorry. I'm playing control. Kevin's playing multiverses. Tim's doing I don't know what. Yeah. Thanks, bro. We took a break, and then I was like, kind of want to do this right now because we were originally I was going to do a control stream. And then I realized. I was like, I 100% downloaded this, but I, apparently I did not, so I lied. I accept that you're selling my data. <laughs> what? Oh. Uh, hold on. Do we get to play yeah, this pickle? What's, uh, what's going on? How's everybody doing? Well, we doing just... good. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna send you guys something a screenshot, not a screenshot, but I'm gonna send you something I saw in Saints Row. Here you go. All right. <laughs> my my man be looking like a cowboy minion. <laughs> Oh, wait, hold on, right. I have to sign in, which requires a Warner Brain. Fuck. I'm really not winning today, am I? They're Warner. Oh, They're wait, Warner. Fuck. Hold on, brain, hold on. Brain, oh, brain, shit. Brain, brain. Oh, god damn. Oh, I gotta, I gotta hide this shit. I just showed this code for like a solid five minutes. Fun <laughs> fact, people is highly. Welcome to brain. Lone Night Gaming. Someone might steal this fucking game from me. If I, I, wouldn't even go, I wouldn't even go that far, Tim. I'd just say Pinky in the Brain, like... I feel that it got a little too popular that, like, some Warner Brothers execs at the time thought, oh, people must love this, so they'll love a lot, lot more of it. I'm shocked, I'm shocked that I have, you, your first reaction wasn't blasphemy. I mean, yes, but also, I understand where that mindset originates from. I mean, look, it's better than Pinky and Elvira and the Brain. They're Pinky, Elvira, and the Brain, 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 Brain. And Larry. Right, yeah, that that was the funniest thing about that is, like, El, El, Pinky, Elvira, and the Brain just, like, fulfilled the prophecy set up by Pinky and the Brain and Larry. The episode the writers made literally just to tell Warner Brothers, fuck off, adding a third character will just ruin the dynamic. And then Warner Brothers down the road just says, now nah, we're going to do it anyway. And they were and right. voila, the writers were right. Because <laughs> writers tend to be right about all that do shit. Do I just submit my email? Like, what the fuck? Producers, sometimes market stuff makes sense to you guys, and that and it's fine. Let the writers do the creative shit. You, you can tell us to calm it down. Do not tell us to add anything. Unless it's a really good idea. Although, do you remember that video that uh, Alex Hirsch put of all the weird requests the Disney censors made of him? Yes. While working on Gravity Falls? That shit's priceless. Now, to be fair with uh, Gravity Falls, I mean, see, here's the thing. I understand why some Disney execs would be a little worried. The thing is, they were worried about all the wrong stuff. Right? None of it was for the actual, like, low-key, like, cosmic horror shit that goes on in Gravity Falls. No, it was all for, like, weird shit, like, I think saying poo butt or something at one point. Yeah. Like, shit that had no consequence and was not worth complaining about. So dumb. Dude, dude. Producers are stupid. I do not know how to get that point across as clearly as they have already, but producers are the, some of the dumbest people you'll ever learn about. <laughs> Just as I was wondering if I was going the right way to get back to one area in the clocks, uh, I see a, a doorway just bursting with the damn things. It's like, okay, cool, we're going the right way. 
<laughs> I'm yeah. sure about that. I, I, I have distinct memories of the clock. When did Control come out? Ah, when did it come out? It hasn't been that long. No. Because was... they, they justified giving it a PS5 upgrade. Was it 2019? 2019, August 2019. Cause I, it's funny because I remember seeing the first trailer for it when on Facebook. It The game, you know how like a lot of indie games will have random trailers pop up on like Facebook and shit? Also, actually, speaking of, uh, now we definitely have to play it tomorrow because tomorrow is the game's third anniversary. Oh, now we have to do it, Kevin. Yeah, now don't, have don't worry. Meanwhile, I'm verifying my Warner Brothers game account for the first 20 minutes of the stream. But, uh, no, but Tim, I'm at the point where after you rescue the medic from the clocks, you have to go back in and deal with the altered item they trapped in a safe room. And when you get in there, you find out it's, like, fucked up and stretched out the safe room into a whole passageway. Huh? I remember like, that. I love just, that's my favorite thing about the oldest house as a setting in Control, is how ridiculous, like, the they're able to get with the layout of it. Yeah. Um. Oh, uh, wait, shit, I can't actually get the anchor, because I don't have the television set, so I can't hover. Gotta use a QR Damn. code for this. No, yeah, so, the initial gameplay trailer for Control was just spread all over Facebook back in like 20, it was either 2017 or 2018, I don't remember. And I remember seeing it just being like, oh my God. And it was mostly just watching Jesse fly. I was like, yeah, I want, I want to play this game. I just distinctly remember like, oh fuck, this is legally distinct SCP. Yeah. Also, I also just got the, uh, the, what's the actual name of the room? Um, the luck and probability puzzles golden suit. Sweet. Do you know about that secret? No. If you go into the, so if you go to research, the research sector and go to the luck and probability division, there's a bunch of like stereotypical, like lucky items spread all over the place. Mm -hmm. If you if you orient them in a right way and like put certain conditions in place and then go into the next room and spin a roulette wheel and if you do everything right it'll land on seven you get two uh, you get a weapon mod two skill points and a gold suit. Oh, okay. I feel so stupid. <laughs> Why? I wasted so many people's time, but at least we had fun. Nah, you're not wasting time, Kev. You're loving life. Oh, that's the dodge. <laughs> the you not played it yet? No, I haven't Kev? touched the game. Kevin, you don't know how to dodge! I don't know how to dodge. But, uh... Yeah, no. Fucking. God dang. God dang. What am I doing? Oh, what the fuck? Shaddy P has a super stomp? Yeah, some people think they leaned a little too hard into the Ultra Instinct Shaggy meme with his skill set. Mm -hmm. So, what, what's more obnoxious? Warner Brothers going too deep into the. Ultra Instinct Shaggy meme? Or Nickelodeon just throwing in Hugh Neutron without his son? I mean... I mean I'm, I'm here to shit talk uh, that the Nickelodeon Smash clone all day, because at least Multiverses didn't have the balls to charge $50. Yeah. Plus, like, Ultra Instinct Shaggy is, you know, funny. I mean, it, it was very much Warner Brothers marketing team latching onto a meme real hard. Like, I remember the, how people were, like, shocked when they officially referenced it in the Warner Brothers logo that, like, where he pulls Scorpion back into hell. <laughs> yeah, it was great.
it's also weird because it's not like Smash Bros where you do like the thing and it does that. You like actually some. Oh no, it's, have... it's kind of a floaty game, and honestly, I kind of respect that. That's yeah, not it's like, like it's trying to perfectly different Smash. I wonder, can I? Because <laughs> I feel like that's the trap a lot of these games fall into. But Everybody... also sometimes it kind of works. I mean, it doesn't always, but sometimes. You need specials. Uh, there was a game. No, not a game. There was something I was watching recently. I cannot... Oh, Cuphead. Right. Oh, God damn it! I forgot containment is where you first run into the mold. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. So basically, this is the don't do it. Don't fucking do it. So, uh, some, I was talking to somebody at work about um, how uh, Paramount Plus has been trying to get South Park away from HBO Max as much as possible. Do you think uh, with all the money that they lost, that'll be the way Paramount Plus gets it back? God, that'd be fucking funny. Oh my god, these the test dummies are fucking Mr. Meeseeks. Mr. Meeseeks, it's me! Look I at me! Do... Wait, I can do my aerial three times? Oh yeah, that like, you're gonna spend most of the game in the air. Oh, never mind, I can only do it twice. Apparently a wall jumped at some point. But oh. you get, yeah, you get two air, uh, air recoveries, two uh, air dodges. Yeah, sure. Teach me how to fucking block. Teach me how to dodge. Oh, that's a counter. Good to know. All my bitches love me. All, all, all my bitches love me. Oh, I have super armor. Yay, and now I unlock the character I defeated, even though I was shaggy the entire time. I don't need more tutorials, let's just fucking... I'll figure it out. <laughs> I've wasted enough of people's time. I mean, no! Hold on one second, hold on. Just... Love you. Play your first match. Alright, I'll play. 1v1. That can't go bad. It went horrible. We haven't even started yet. Alright, oh, it's region locked and stuff, so... Yeah, I'm Central America. No, I'm North America. I'm gonna out my location. I'm in North America. You know what? Fuck it. I'll fight some PC people. Of course Shaggy's locked. The Batman's free, Arya Stark is free, LeBron James. Also, I don't think it's region locked, I think they just try to pair you with people on the same regional server so that it's not a lag clusterfuck. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. I, no, I understand that, I was talking about crossplay. I think. Ugh, I hate the mold, I hate it. <laughs> what, you wanna... Well, it, it's part of why I'm dreading the Resident Evil 8 DLC in October. Because the new enemies in the Rose DLC look like they're made of mold. You know what? I'm gonna play LeBron James. <laughs> LeBron James? Of course, I am LeBron James. From the Toon Squad? No. Oh, it's... You're fucked with me. That's great. Wait, can I have... Yep. Nope. That's that's premium stuff. I'm not here sure, for Sure, they premium. added LeBron, oh, but when are we getting the real G? Al G Rhythm. Oh, you're right. You mean, um... They're too powerful. I'm fighting... 
Oh no, I'm fighting McNephew! <laughs> I have no perks selected because I'm stupid. <laughs> and what was his knockoff of the Monstars? The Goon Squad? No, uh, yes, the Goon Squad. Yeah. I didn't even get the joke with that. Were, were, were they like famous basketball? They're... There were other... they, were, they were all parodies of famous basketball stars, kind of like the Monstars, but animal theme for some reason. It, they were characters from the kid's video game at the beginning, because the kid wants to be a video game major. Are you ready for a show? Also, was that kid actually LeBron James' kid? No. no. It was a made-up son. He doesn't, his kids don't even have that name. Oh, no! No, my ball! Um, you know, uh, in order, uh, let me see, the members, let's see if they properly attribute, like, who's based on who. I why did I pick a character I haven't seen before? Did you, have you guys heard the, have you guys seen the article where, for the movie Beast, uh, Idris Elba wouldn't let his daughter be in the movie, because... He said he had no chemistry with her on screen. <laughs> Imagine being his daughter. So the Goon Squad were based on Diana Taurasi, Clay Thompson, ne uh, Nyeka Ogwamike. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that name. Anthony Davis and Damian Lillard. Uh, who, in order, White Mamba was inspired by Dan Tarasi's basketball name nickname White Mamba. Yeah. Uh, Wet Fire was inspired by the Splash Brothers nickname of uh, Clay Thompson and Steph Curry. Uh, how do I... none of us know how to kill this character with our characters? This is Arachnica, the stupidest. Arachnica was based on uh, Nika Ogomike. I don't- they don't give a reason for the spider theme. I don't- Uh, the brow was Anthony Davis, just cause Anthony Davis got a big fat forehead. Yeah. Where did I go? Match point. Oh. And Kronos- Kronos was inspired by, uh, Damian Lillard's nickname, Dame Time. Okay. Like, it's literally just joking about the, uh, fucking, like, nicknames, uh, like, that these guys have professionally. Yeah, I mean, that's fun. It's not a good movie still, but it's fun. Again, overall, it's the same, like, base gag of, Match point. Blue uh, team. of the Monstars, where it's like, oh, they're clearly meant to be parodying very specific basketball players of the time. Which one was fucking Larry Bird? <laughs> Wait, was Larry Bird a 90s star? Well, no, Larry Bird was retired like by the time the first Space Jam came out. Remember, he was playing golf with Michael and Bill Murray. Right, right. Wait, which one was Charles? Do you want that answer? Yeah, I do want that answer. I want it to, I want, I want, I want Space Jam ruined even more. Alright, let's just, since we did it for the Goon Squad, let's go through the Monstars. Fucking fandom wiki ads. Oh my god! Wait a second, guys, guys, holy shit! Do you want to see, so you can learn more emotes in Saints Row. Um, do you want to see what one of the emotes is? Go on. Yeah, I gotta find it. It's essentially this. <laughs> it's called Frankie Boy. Oh, Jack's gone. Oh, well. This is the worst match of a fighting game I've ever seen. <laughs> Like, I don't think any of us know what we're doing. Frames. 
Why am I up here now? So then we close Discord. Victory! I, that was I, like I I was trying to like swipe the picture that Tim sent off my screen so I could go back to looking at this, and I accidentally just closed Discord outright. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm looking Continue. through all. Oh my god. So yeah. Tim, Let's yes, go. pound, pound the fat orange one stole Charles Barkley's powers. Is that the answer you wanted? Uh, I'm looking up Pound right now. What do you mean? It's the Monstars. It's the fat orange one. The leader. Space Jam. Got it. Wow. Wow. The green one with the spines and the big chin is Bang, who stole Patrick Ewing's talent. Jeez. Is he the, is he the tallest one? No, 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 that's Bupkiss, who stole Larry Johnson's tap. Oh, wait, no, Bupkiss is the purple one, uh, who stole Larry Johnson's. Uh, Blanco stole Sean Bradley's talent and is the tall blue monster. Yeah. And then Knot stole Muggsy Bogue's uh, talent is oh, the short red one. <laughs> also, I just gotta say, I adore... Um, maybe adore is a strong word, but... I do appreciate um, Big Mouth for drawing Patrick Ewing as obnoxiously huge. No, uh, Patrick oh, Ewing, this... like, the monster that stole Patrick Ewing's power is the green one with the flat top and the giant chin. Yeah. Oh, my, my mic volume is too loud. Oh, no. Also, because he's not really as relevant in basketball today, can we talk about what a fantastic name Muggsy Bogues is? <laughs> yeah. So, I'm very glad you guys can't see this list of emotes I'm looking at. Because, uh, oh. you can floss in this game. God damn it. <laughs> I'm I'm having more fun looking at the emotes than I am actually playing the game. I mean, sometimes that's just how it goes. At all. I mean, I'll be real. We're both really bad at this, and I'm, so you're not missing much. Yeah. I've weakened him. I've broken Finn's bones. You haven't done shit. I won the oh. first game. I I accidentally I, I I was just watching BuzzFeed on Solve for fun. I accidentally came across the episode with my favorite quote from the entire show, which is, "I've connected them. You haven't connected shit. I've connected them." <laughs> oh, yes. I just love them so much, and I've seen I've seen that I've seen that bit out of context so many times. I think it's about uh, the. John Bonet Ramsey case. Okay. Which uh, this is a fun topic for him. Like, I'm just kidding. We're not getting into that. We're not. God yeah. damn it! I I love the motel as a concept and control the uh, the ocean view. Actually but... playing it sucks. Huh? Actually you know playing. It's not that complicated, the puzzles. What do you mean? No, but... It's just, I like the, I, I like the everything else. But, What's like, just the fact, like, that every couple times you'll go there, something will be weird happening. Like, one time it's pretty innocuous. Some people just found it physically out there, trying to see if they could rent a room, but the doors were locked and they couldn't get in. Oh. Yeah, go on. Sorry. Uh, and then this time you go to it, and the rooms are upside down, and you hear screaming coming from behind a locked door. You just gave me an idea for my back room. What? No, nothing. Just I, I just realized that that kind of has my concept down of like just going to like this random place when you go. And there's blood coming out from under one of the locked doors. Lovely. What are you talking about? That's a, that's natural. It's on its period. Um. Match 
Match point. No. Blue team. Yeah. Get out of my face. I don't know what I'm doing. Help. Make me, bitch. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to Finn, not Wolfhard. Finn, not Yes. Yes, the most famous not Finn. Wolfhard. Finn Wolfhard. I, re I remember seeing a clip of Pat Oswald making a very unfunny, weird joke at Finn Wolfhard's expense. And it's just David Harbour and Joe Keery giving him very dirty looks afterwards. The guy thinks the joke was Finn Wolfhard, who was blessed with the greatest porn name ever. <laughs> Is this? Which, uh, no. That, that's an interesting statement for the guy who, when he started uh, acting, was a teenager. Yeah. What did I just do? Ah, no. How about no? Like, keep in mind, Finn Wolfhard was still <laughs> well. Uh, and it's like, yeah, I, I, I say, know, it I, like... I know it's a joke, bro, but no, no, not, not, not with him. Rematch. Sure, I'll keep okay. one more match with this kid. This is the tiebreaker. Oh wait, this is best of three, anyways. This is the tiebreaker. Choose your character. You know yeah, they got DMX on the soundtrack. Which soundtrack? Sorry. Saints Row. Oh, yeah. Nice. Uh, and yes, it is up in here. Do I have to go back and check for copyrighted music? No, I, I had it turned off. Okay, cool. Thanks for being very considerate. Why am I level two and he's level one? Up in here. How did I level up? <laughs> level up. Level up. Level up. Sorry, I went back to Sonic Heroes. Did you, did you guys watch Cartoon Network's Level Up? Mm, I mean, I remember seeing it. I watched the movie. I didn't watch the show. Oh, Fun no, fact, no. Eric Andre's in the movie. Now I know why my mic is fucking picking up all of the TV audio. It's on the ground next to the TV. Oh, wow. Now here's Tim. Did you not only see the movie, but then the show out of Jimmy's head? Yes. Well, first of all, the movie's not called out of Jimmy's head. I know it's not. Oh, good news. Control's installed. Yeah. Yes. Are you sure it's just not ready to play in? Because there is a difference. Well, it said installed. Oh, damn. But yes, I have seen I have seen reanimated and out of Jimmy's head. And Which is a dark title for that movie. Yeah. <laughs> I do love uh, it because he died, <laughs> and he sees cartoons now. God, it's fucked up. Um, it was not a good movie and show, but it has its charm, I guess. Also, I, I love that their version of the Walt's head is frozen in Disney World theory. It's just, yeah, this random employee keeps this guy's brain in with him at all times in the same cooler he brings his lunch to work in which admittedly yeah it's pretty funny blue team that, that, that guy that guy laugh out of me when i went back to it but yeah no for those who aren't familiar uh reanimated and by extension out of jimmy's head were one of the creations of the cartoon the cartoon network cn real block where they were basically the new management at Cartoon Network was for some reason convinced what Cartoon Network needed was live action programming. You want the honest answer to that? Hmm. The writer's strike was happening. True, yeah, that's the real answer. Is the writer's strike was happening and it was cheaper to fund reality shows than work on scripted animation. To be uh, fair, to be fair with that show though, that predates CN Real. Well the movie does. Yeah, but, well, that's my... but I feel like the same things that led to CM Real were what led to reanimated and out of Jimmy's head. Yeah, well, because they, they made a big thing of, like, Cartoon Network's first live-action show. And then CN Real happened, like, a year later, I think. But, uh, what I will say is, uh, the basic premise is, this kid goes, who's, like, your stereotypical, like, Disney Channel original movie, like, 
shy teenager in middle school or some shit uh, goes to not Disneyland with it is uh, with his class was it he, like his class goes to the park yes uh, and he gets run over by the not Disneyland train <laughs> yeah that is like victory that shot of him getting hit by the train is probably one of the funniest like, shots he, he just gets cartoonishly plowed down by this little train like it, it's amazing how that and it, it was very clear there was not a lot of like on site like shoot budget in uh like production budget Fresh. for this sh for this movie cuz the not Disneyland looks like a kids park right down to the train being like one of those ones you'll see drive through malls that like the the driver of it is like squatting on this thing what well, look the rider strike was happening. choose okay. your character but anyway uh so he's rushed to the Disneyland hospital where Disneyland surgeons wearing mascot suits are operating on him and decide he needs a brain transplant. And so one of them whips out not Walt Disney's brain from the cooler he brings his lunch in. And instead of horribly killing this kid in a botched surgery that no sane doctor would perform, he's still himself, but now he sees cartoon characters. Which makes no sense, but okay. Like, the writers, like, were really stretching Prepare how the brain yourself. is supposed to function to make this premise work. Look, no one said it was good. Absolutely no one. Also, to steal a joke from uh, Quint Reviews, Hey, Jimmy, guess which one of us are based on minstrel show characters? Oh, no. It's all of us. My brother gave the me answer this is one. all of us, Jimmy. Time to make good use of it. Um, there's a bit. There's a lot. Of, there's a lot of bits I remember from that movie, particularly um, the dad uh, is one of the weirdest characters in anything I've seen. Because huh. he's just a, he's just a man child at all times, but also he's the school principal. How can I forget the important factor that now that he has Walt Disney's brain rattling around in his head, that makes him the automatic CEO of not Wait, Disney. What What the fuck was that? <laughs> I know you're I talking about the game, but the timing was perfect. It, you know what, both. What the fuck, what's going on with Velma here? And what the fuck is <laughs> Yeah, you know, when you have the brain of a dead man and you start hallucinating cartoon characters that and you're a child that immediately qualifies you to run a multi-million dollar company it's the willy wonka effect please tell me we're not talking about like monkey bone or something like no God, no i could go on a rant about monkey bone go on oh wait why just because it's such a fucking weird movie uh why, why were you thinking i thought you just didn't like it Oh. I mean, I, I won't pretend it's a particularly good movie, but it's, there's something to be said for how weird it is. Like, that, that's, like, a Matt value Hunt. alone. Did, so, have you heard Gus's, Gus Sarola's story about, uh, um, that monkey bone? I have not. He, he, so, Gus Sarola, back in 2000, when, when, when it, before Monkey Bone even dropped the trailer, Gus Sarola made a website called, uh, showmethemonkey.com, which was just... It was just a gif of a monkey dancing, that's all it was. That, that was the website. And then the trailer from Monkey Bone dropped, and Monkey Bone, the character, just goes, Show me the monkey! Oh no, and, my TV power went out! And, <laughs> oh and no, I lost signal with the Elgato! <laughs> oh oh no. god! Oh, I'm still alive somehow. But I guess I- I guess in my flailing, I've somehow killed Velma. But I think right. I lost because my capture's flipping out. Hold yeah. On, I'm Why is her Twitch head big? Right what happened? Why is Velma's head big? Oh, because the fucking it PS5 like controller. Um, yeah, so Gus messages Continue. Jeff and he's like, go. dude, we're gonna be rich. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's Bernie Australia all over again. Bernie <laughs> your character. Yeah, Bernie has, that's right, I forgot about that. Um, fuck, what was it? There's another. Right, so, uh, out of Jimmy's head, um, there's, there's two things I always remember about that movie. One, Tom Kenny voices the penguin, Tux. Uh, oh, you're also, back out of Jimmy's head, okay. 
Sorry, I, I, I had a lot of things stuck in my head. Also, uh, Pee Wee Herman's in that movie as Golly Gopher. Fuck, he is. Uh, I think Joan Cusack voices the girl gopher. And also, another thing. The kid's dad, he pours a glass of... He, he grabs a glass, pours an entire bottle of chocolate syrup in it, and then a drip... A, a drip okay, of milk. Here we go. And he just drinks it. That man is a fucking psychopath. Now, real quick, Tim, uh, with Monkey Bone, because I forgot how many, like, big name actors are in this movie. Yeah. First off, I'm going to name a character, and I want you to tell me who plays them without Googling. Okay. Who plays Monkey Bone himself? John Turturro. John Turturro, correct. Turturro. Yeah, I can't pronounce his name for shit. Who plays Hypnos? I have no idea. You do know who it is, you just don't know that he's in this movie. Yeah, well, I haven't seen Monkey Bone, that's why. Oh, no, playing Hypnos, the god of sleep, is Giancarlo Esposito. Oh my god. I think Gus from Breaking Bad. It, it took me a minute to remember his name. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, Bob Odenkirk is the head surgeon. Cool. So we have Saul and we have Gus. Good to know. Any other Breaking Bad actors I need to know about? Not that I'm aware. Whoopi Match Goldberg point. is death. Uh, Chris Kattan is organ donor Stu. Oh man, we got Chris Kattan, my favorite SNL actor. Oh, I got uh, what? How did I get frozen? How does Velma have the power to freeze me? <laughs> so I'm as happy as I am to see it. It doesn't remotely surprise me with how many like practical costume characters are in this movie. Doug Jones is in this. Cool, cool. Uh, let's see, anyone else I immediately recognize? Lou Romano is in this. Um, oh. Ed Holmes is in this. Why am I playing on Ed Holmes? I mean, he's not in a ton of stuff, but he's in a few movies I know. Wait, hold on, man. Why is... what? That's Ed Helms. Uh, oh, like, throw lock. Yeah, it's not giving me anything. Okay, here we go. We got something going here. I have no idea who Okay. Victory! He was in the right stuff and powered the duck. Yeah. Oh, man! Wow. <laughs> what a career! Oh. I never said he was famous. I just was said he I knew him Howard the Duck, or was he the guy that turns into an alien? <laughs> hey, Howard! Okay. Hey, we, we. There is no Howard, only Zool. <laughs> oh, Howard, you kid, you kid. Choose kidster. your character. You know what? I'm gonna give Arya one more shot. Arya Stark. <laughs> yeah. No name. Because that's when my capture flipped out. Have you guys seen the... Well, first of all, I can guarantee neither of you watched House of the Dragon. Uh, probably not, but apparently after the first episode, it was already renewed for a second season or something like oh, that. Oh, this was bad. But, but, yeah, no, if you want to see a really trippy Prepare movie with yourself. Brendan Fraser as the star with a lot of really, really well done practical effects and an okay to mediocre story, watch Monkey Bone. I, I do want to watch it. It looks fun. Mm -hmm. Um... I do love Brandon Fraser. Mm -hmm. What the fuck was I thinking of? Wait, is it Brandon? Like it's, got, it's Brendan. Brendan, sorry. Uh, but it's got a lot of gross-out humor, but that should kind of be expected when the secondary main character is a claymated monkey that's a boner euphemism. Yeah. Oh, is that the... Is that what the monkey bone is? Yeah, yeah. monkey bone is a boner. Anyway. It's not an actual bone. No. But yeah, it is. Yeah, he's monkey. Voiced by John Turturro. You know, renowned actor John Turturro. Oh, like John Turturro hasn't done some dumb movies in the past. Transformers. Also, Organ Donor Stu, the guy played by fucking Chris Kattan, is basically this fucking corpse Brendan Fraser's soul possesses later in the movie. 
And like the reason, I think the only reason they cast Chris Kattan is because the body acting they do where, because it's a corpse who's had a bunch of his organs removed for donation, like he's basically like flopping all over himself trying to run while also having to hold himself together. I guess that's something he's just good at. Hey, it's Chris Kattan, it's one of the only things he's good at. You know what he's not good at? Being funny. Anyway. <laughs> That's terrible. He's not, he's let, cool. not let uh, Stephen you in the nope uh, that make you think otherwise. Chris Kattan is not. Why do I have a pie? <laughs> well, the whole bit of that scene, if you want to understand, is that he's completely making up this fictional SNL sketch. Well, no, I think that sketch did happen in that universe. Like there was, like the reason, the fact that there was a Mad Magazine cover making fun of it makes me think SNL absolutely made fun of it. Yeah, it's fair. Cause you know. I mean, SNL will make fun of anything. They will. They made Elon Musk Wario. Like, what's you know next? The a millennial Hospital, or no Gen Z Hospital? My mistake. That was a sketch. I, you can't I even have to Elon... beat them to Karen House. That's that's my mission in life. I mean, it's not hard. I mean, first of all, Karen House already exists. It's called every reality show Discovery has given us. Have I not? We definitely talked about my stupid show pitch for... Not show pitch, but like sketch pitch for Karen House. Yeah, you pitched it to us. How many faces must I steal? Stop! My... No, my face stealing count! Point. Red team! Welcome to the face still count. I'm your host, James A. Janice. I just want to take her face off. Stop. Nicholas fucking cage. Uh. What sucks is I actually have range because she fights like a fucking fencer. Yeah. And I also think I just destroyed evidence. Have you guys seen the the bit from House of the Dragon where they're jousting, the guy gets knocked off the horse. Well, no, not, not knocked off the horse. He gets knocked out. He's still riding the horse. His body lands on the railing in between them. And he's, like, grinding against the railing. So somebody put the Tony Hawk Pro Skater thing. Girl, I'll, I'll try to find it for you. It's fucking funny. It's the only thing I've seen from that show. I've seen nothing else. I have no intentions of watching another game. I mean, I didn't watch anything of Game of Thrones except from the first three episodes. And I have only good. seen the second to last, the ending of the second to last episode, and then the last episode. That is my Game of Thrones history. <laughs> I have watched the last episode. That's just Oh uh, no, of... not again! Damn you, Velma, and your ability to make my capture go whack! <laughs> Velma, I'm, I'm... damn you! <laughs> I, I, I wanted to watch the Game of Thrones finale. I wanted to know what sheer disappointment felt like. Oh no, I just wanted to- my parents were watching it, so I was like, eh, screw it, I'll watch it too. And then it was like the most disappointing shit ever, and I just saw it and I was like, wow, this must be very disappointing if this is a conclusion arc. I mean, yeah. Cause like, I always- here's the thing, I never really needed to watch it, because every time my friends would talk about it before I could see an episode, and I was like, oh. And then I'd play video games and not continue not to watch things. Remember the episode of Lone Night Gaming, when I just straight up- spoil a big part of Game of Thrones. Oh, yeah. No, that's alright. Like, I, I no hesitation. I was like, yeah, this happens. And then Jack was like, bro, really? Like, I don't watch fucking Game of Thrones, so I didn't really care, but yeah, you did do that. Yeah. I, I really was Honestly, like, we spoiled yeah. quite a bit on this show. At least now we give spoiler warnings, and we try to be more tactful we, about we it. We do, yeah. You but here's the... I mean, yeah. You guys haven't really, really... I'll be honest, I don't think you guys have gotten, like... I don't want... I don't care about teams. I'm a lone wolf. I'm a lone knight. God damn it. 
I, uh, uh, this isn't team night gaming. It's lone night gaming. Even though I have three people with me. Oh, this is the Mat Lab. Hold on, I don't want to be in the Mat Lab. I want to figure out how to buy Taz so I can just win, and then be like, "Wow, Taz sucks when I lose because I'm not a good player." <laughs> oh, the shop's not open yet. Wait, how do I buy characters? Oh, I can buy Shaggy. Oh, zoinks, biatch. All right, time to shag up the competition. Wait. Kevin, no. <laughs> no. The knight, the knight who shagged me. <laughs> Please, never again. I already make mistakes. You already make mistakes. Good to know. I mean, like, who has seen this show and been like, I haven't made a Choose mistake? Your character. Oh, wait. I, right, I have fucking Wonder Woman unlocked. Like, oh, Zoink yeah, Scoob, I can do this with my shirt off. Fucking... Oh, never mind. Kung Fu Shaggy. I swear to fucking God. Anyways. Say I scare easy. No, man, they haven't seen what kind of movies were y'all think talking about? You all want to talk about? Remember, remember in Die Hard when Bruce Willis took off his shoes and walked on glass? So cool. Yeah. What an edge lord. <laughs> what? <laughs> Man, have you never seen Die Hard? No, I have. I have seen Die Hard. I don't know why okay. he takes off his shoes to walk on glass, but I do. Well, it was a whole thing of like. He was he's, he's a nervous flyer, so he's trying to do a thing a guy on the plane told him to do. Where Isn't that Die Hard off. 2? No, it's Die Hard 1. Oh, okay. Because you said plane, and I was like, that's Die Hard 2, you dumbass, but no. I mean, he still flies into L.A. at the start of the movie. Dumbass. Trying to top me off. But, uh, oh, yeah. I just realized I haven't really talked about the most recent case of two evils destroying each other. Go on. So the site Kiwi Farms, which is a far-right, like, forum, has been repeatedly swatting Marjorie Taylor Greene, which has led her leading a charge to get their site taken down. Wow. It's just a fucking beautiful moment of just them fucking destroying each other. Let them fight. Let them fight. Let them die. I'm sorry, let them fight. I was thinking about that fucking... I don't know what movie quote it is. Why is this dog summoning meteors? Help. This mistletoe gog is too powerful. Uh oh, rain dog. I should have known you were talking about that. I mean, it could be Jake from State Farm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, Finn, I got a job. <laughs> Why the heck make Jake from State Farm hot? Damn. Wait, Wait he wasn't already? <laughs> Way to just, like, backhandedly insult the old Jake from State Farm. <laughs> we are all thinking it. So apparently there's a rumor going Match around point. that they're going to announce the cast for the Fantastic Four at D23 next month. Oh man, I can't wait for my least favorite Marvel team to finally get cast. This, look, it's not their fault that they can't get a decent fucking movie. Oh, so when the tether doesn't have anything, it becomes a fucking laser beam? Yeah, I say they're my least favorite as if the Eternals don't exist. Or the or the Inhumans. Or Honestly, Thor 2. I'll put Thor 2 up there. Well, my, my point is, there's a lot of Marvel teams that are just not interesting. Like, Guardians, Avengers, fucking X-Men, they work because they're very memorable characters. Match point! Red team. Yes, absolutely. The Eternals tried to, was like too edgy. I I don't know. I haven't really seen Eternals. Oh, edgy. It was just boring. Like well, I mean, edgy. it tried to be serious, which I define as edgy. And hey, what don't you define as edgy, bro? Uh, circles. Wait, no, circles have infinite edges. Never mind. <laughs> God. Circles right. are the ultimate edge. Shadow. Sonic, you want to know why I curl up into a ball? 
because a circle is infinite edges. And then you get a spear, and that's infinite edges with multiple cir- and that's an infinite amount of circles, Sonic. Shadow, when's the last time you slept? I don't need sleep, I need my guns. Have you, have you seen this shit where supposedly uh, the Flash is getting like really high test screening scores? And I'm entirely convinced that that is bullshit. Like, the, the specific wording is the highest scores at test screenings since Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy. Yeah, it's a little sussy. Also, didn't test audiences hate the joke? Hate, hate the Dark Knight? Victory! Yes, they did. Because test audiences are fucking stupid. And I don't even like the Dark Knight. Uh, oh, someone replied, Source. I made it the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is just. This is part of the Ezra Miller apology tour strategy. We knew it was coming. Choose your character! I really enjoy playing Shaggy, but I think I'm going to try a little bit of Wonder Woman. They think that they, they, think that they have them apologize for all the, like, like all the bad publicity. Because they're, they're not apologizing for the crimes and, you know, taking any responsibility mm -hmm. for that. They're just apologizing for their behavior and how they want to get help. Yeah, fuck off, though, bro. Like, Prepare then, yourself. motherfucker, go, like, turn yourself in then because you've committed multiple crimes yeah no I hope they uh, hope they go to jail won't happen but I hope let's get this over with. like imagine committing assault multiple times throughout different states kidnapping a child uh, being a rumor and a pedophile basically and then turning around and doing the BP CEO from South Park. We're sorry. Wait, I wasn't done yet. Oh, sorry. Go on. Uh, breaking and entering. Dealing. Burglary. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I think I'm done. Think. Uh, there's the whole cult in Iceland thing. Right. Well, I mean, that's not a direct crime, sadly. That's just kind of a... It's sketchy as shit, but it's not technically illegal. Yet. Yeah. Yes, as far as we know, there's nothing technically illegal that's been done. Yeah. Still sketchy and morally deplorable, but... Yeah. I mean, look, Jared Leto... <laughs> Jared Leto has a cold, and he basically got away with it. Yeah. I mean, I don't like Jared Leto either. <laughs> what, 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 what was... What was the Cinema Snob's Logan Paul quote? Paul filmed the dead body and he still has a career. Actually, it, oh, yeah. and arguably it cost several small YouTubers their funding. Yeah, it did. Um, but, like, honestly, YouTube had too many channels to pay too, but like, honestly, it probably was fucking forest. And YouTube had a lot of problems at the start of 2019. I did a paper on that, actually. Nice. Yeah. Also, match point. Hold on, I got really excited about YouTube. I gotta kill this deer real quickly. <laughs> match point. Blue team. Stop firing your lasers at me. No. Oh. This fucking meteorite laser dog, I swear to god. Where is your plushie so I can buy it? <laughs> Did you hear the recent, like, joke going around of, uh, Nostalgia Critic Reviews, the boy in the striped pajamas? Yeah, I, then I sent that to the group chat? Did you? Oh, that might have been where I saw it originally. Yeah. <laughs> fucking... So fucking dumb. I love it. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was Oni Plays. Oh, so, last night I was talking with Chase about a bunch of the stuff announced at Gamescom. Uh, like new tales from the Borderlands. We were talking about how this uh, TDR executive lady looks like a fusion of that one, like lady from Borderlands Three and the administrator from TF Two. Yeah. Uh, 
how I'm weirdly vibing with the Pinocchio Dark Souls like. Victory! <laughs> uh, how Callisto Protocol is still legally distinct dead space, and I'm here for it. Cause they got fucked over hard. Yeah, fucking visceral games uh, got screwed. So I'm happy those guys are getting to do their own back for blood type deal. Uh, very excited for Ghostbusters and Spirits Unleashed. I feel like that's a really fun concept for that franchise. Man, I, I, can't... Know, that, I know that's been kept, like the asymmetric like multiplayer like games have been like based around like supernatural properties or horror properties have been kind of the thing recently. But I feel Ghostbusters really fits. Yeah, it does. You know, I'm really excited for the Choose new Harry Potter character. game. I'm sure glad that Harry Potter is a franchise that's untouched by any controversy lately. <laughs> like, is this just going to be politics the episode? Like, Jesus. Politics the episode. I don't feel like J.K. Rowling being a turf is political. No, it's no, it's, it's I mean, no, but like, do, do always... not do not let use the Republican definition of political because it's very inaccurate. Okay, cool. Just because it's a social issue doesn't make it political. Mm -hmm. Well, it does, but it doesn't. Because politics is a very... I mean, honestly, it's... If you want me to go into the social structure, honestly, it's kind of America's fault. Because we generalize everything in our, spree in our speeches. No, it, it very much is, I'm just saying. Yeah. So, like, when I say something's political, I mean it's actually controversial. Like, basically, you can't talk about two things at work. Politics... And, uh, Religion. and like, well, no, actually gross. Actually, that falls under politics, believe it or not. <laughs> politics mm. is basically trying to, like, make people, trying to make people think a different way or, like, challenging their beliefs. I think that falls under politics at work. Oh, because it's funny, because this is the funny shit I wanted to tell you. On the back of the paper, they say, do you have the freedom of speech? And they're like, no, no, you don't. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> Like, it was really more harsh than it- Like, I got where- get where they're coming from, but it was so fucking harsh! Like, it was just like, no, you don't. You don't have- you cannot say what you want. As long- if it's sexually explicit or, like, political, you- you should avoid that talk at work. It could result in dismissal. But I'm like, okay, like, severe examples, sure, that can result in dismissal. And it's just like, yeah, but like, without discussion, where are we in, like, as a species? Like, nowhere. And then there's just some stuff that are like, people are just fighting for like no reason. It's like, dude, it's clearly obvious. And just like, explain yourself. I'm like, I don't have to fucking look at it. <coughs> I will say in, uh, in uh, different news, for the first time I think ever, I'm very happy to say Netflix canceled a show because Resident Evil has been canceled after one season. Very happy. Because God, that was a garbage fire. Mm-hmm. <sighs> the, 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 isn't that the show that mentions Zootopia porn? It is. It know, really fucking is. I'm just gonna. I'm just upset. And had a, and had a character be Wesker who really was not Wesker. And I don't mean that because the actor was black. That has nothing to do with it. It's the fact that it was a completely different character in a completely different setting, and they called him Wesker because that mm -hmm. gets them reference points. It's like, man, you could have just. Gave him sunglasses, a leather jacket, and just... Oh, they gave him sunglasses and a leather jacket for one scene, and that's, like, the only time he resembled Wesker. So otherwise, it's just a guy. Yeah. It is my dream to own a leather jacket and sunglasses, though. <laughs> well, Kevin, I have some crazy fucking news for you. Is it called money? <laughs> it's called just go to the fucking store and buy it. Wow. On my minimum wage salary? I'm thinking about getting an apartment, man. Because, <laughs> like, here's the thing that really frustrated me is, like, Lance Reddick, who played Wesker in the series, is a really good actor. Phenomenal actor. God, he was Wesker? Yeah. <laughs> and they fucked it up? Yeah. I mean, again, this whole show was a garbage fire. It's not that shocking. Meanwhile, you, you watch fucking, uh... You watch Welcome to Raccoon City, and while it's flawed, it's still a flawed. Like, the, the really sad thing is that Welcome to Raccoon City is the closest to an, a, like, a true adaptation Resident Evil fans have ever gotten. And they bitched about it. This is too dark. They bit the hand that feeds, and this was the result. I, like, I get it. 
fucking the lighting in Love and Raccoon City was trash. Uh, but the best of the movie was good. Although I think that's partly because they had next to no budget. Yeah, they did. Special effects are oh, easier oh, if no one can see it, them. Fuck! Oh, Lance Reddick was in Castlevania, that's right. Oh, weird. Well, like, think about it. I mean, to, you know what, to be fair, Welcome to Raccoon City also had a terrible Wesker. It did. And, and here's the thing, I love that actor. He's great. He was a terrible Wesker. Uh, for context, for people who don't know, uh, I think his name's Tom Cooper. Uh, he played Luther Hargraves in The Umbrella Academy. Tom Hopper. Hopper, my mistake. Uh, yeah, he yeah. plays Albert Wesker. Although an important distinction is, so Welcome to Raccoon City, for those who haven't seen it, is a, in, it's an odd amalgamation of the plots of Resident Evil's 1 and 2 with some extra stuff from other games added, sprinkled in for no reason. I think it, I think that works because, frankly, there's no, there's nothing saying that the first two games don't happen the same night. Yeah, no, it's not, like, explicitly stated otherwise, so it works in that way. And again, um, like, Wait, doesn't I, 3 take I, place I, I, during 1? While some people complain he doesn't look that much like his, like, actual, like, source material, I like Avan Jogia as Leon. I think that's fucking fantastic. Oh, yeah, no, he, he nailed the role. Like, he fucking... Like, yes, he is very much original Resident Evil 2 Leon in that he's the rookie cop who's just kind of there. I think, but my, I think we're at a point in the series where too many people were used to, like, badass rescue the president's daughter Leon instead of original like rookie cop there on a bad night yeah but here's the thing at by the end of the movie no oh yeah he's Leon Kennedy this is for you because he, he goes up to William he's like hey motherfucker fucking rocket launcher ready I'm like yeah no that's Leon uh Claire Claire was pretty good that's the girl from um Ant-Man the Wasp as Ghost. Is it? Yeah, it's yeah. her. No, you're thinking of who played Jill, Hannah John Camp. Right, yeah, Jill. So, God. I'm so, I'm, I'm so used to Claire Redfield. Claire Redfield is the girl from uh, Skins. Continue. And Pirates okay. of the yeah. Caribbean 5. Yes. Uh, I will say, this movie had a weird amount of Arrowverse actors, because Robbie Jill Amell is Chris character. Redfield, and Neil McDonough is William Birkin. Both great. I mean, I kind of wish Tom Hopper played Chris. Because I, well, I get it. I, I frankly, to me. I'm not like the craziest Robbie Amell fan, but he did a good job as Chris. I think he did. But when you when you have, Tom but it, Hopper, it, I think I think the issue is more Tom Hopper fits more as Chris than he does Wesker. Yeah. Also, because you know, I know I know it's mostly Resident Evil five and six, but. Chris Redfield is jacked. <laughs> um, of course, there's my favorite character. There's my favorite uh, <laughs> character in the movie. Is it Nathan Dales as Brad Vickers? Yeah. <laughs> Derry, what are you doing here? <laughs> Couple zombies coming to a fucking police station the other day. I, lo I love. My aunt uncle's sex life is is none of your business. In the goat Rabbit pen. <laughs> for the for context, there's a bit in Letterkenny where most people probably know Nathan Dale's from, where uh, Wayne and Katie are having a hick off <laughs> uh, about. <laughs> we wish double down on this. Uh, he plays Daryl. No, he basically Katie and Wayne are having a hick off about uh, Squirrely Dan and Daryl's like respective cousins' houses. In, uh, like who's the bigger hick? And, it, and the, like Katie's winning argument is, I found what could only be a glory hole. To which Daryl chimes in, Katie, my aunt and uncle's private li romantic life is none of your business. In the goat pen. <laughs> 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 Good show. Fucking, um... God, who else is in this? Is there any other actors we've left out of mention? Uh, hold on, I gotta go back to the Welcome to Raccoon City cast page. Out of I think we hit about just all the important characters. Like all the major characters. Fucking... Also, 
Uh, I, I, I just I keep remembering Barry's not in that movie. Was not ready. I didn't recognize Donald Logue as Chief Irons because they have him made up to be so gross as Chief Irons. I don't know who that actor is. Uh, he's been in a couple stuff: uh, Sons of Anarchy, Gotham, okay. uh, mostly TV work. Yeah, that's fine. Most actors tend to stick to TV. In, uh, if I'm remembering correctly, in Gotham, he was Harvey Bullock. That makes perfect sense. Right? Match point. Uh, Blue team. Uh, I know Josh Crudis from something. He played Ben Bert Bertolucci in Raccoon City. What do I know him from? Oh, so... What was it that I was thinking? It's, I'm not seeing anything I explicitly recognize, but I swear I've seen him in stuff other than this movie. Weird. Uh, what's the fuck that called? I love that, like, the sixth listed cast member on Google is Stephanie Hawkins, Sickly Mom. Uh, and with that cast name is this photo, like this, like professional photo of this absolutely like gorgeous woman in this fantastic dress. <laughs> um, also, I, I mentioned it already, but um, point. why was Barry not in Welcome to Ratchet City? Yeah. Like, come on. When you're awkwardly mashing two games together like fucking trains on a toy track, you're gonna lose some stuff. But they got, but they got Brad. No, it's not like it's not like they didn't have an additional member of the Stars team in there. They mm. did. There's just some random guy. Fucking, I do love, I do love uh, Barry from the Fresh Resident Evil. <laughs> You're almost a Jill sandwich. <laughs> Here's what I'm confused about. Doesn't Resident Evil 3 take place during 2? No. Oh. I thought it did because it's the same city and everything. Well, if we counted every time Raccoon City shows up in Resident Evil, we'd be here all night. Oh. No, fucking. Resident Evil 3 definitely takes place a few days, or at the very least a few weeks after the first game. Resident Evil 2, you could make the argument it takes place on the same night. I mean, don't get me wrong, Resident Evil will, like... Actually, let me double check something. Yeah, fuck it. This picture doesn't like, load properly. So, Resident Evil... Victory! 1, 2, 3... Code Veronica and Zero all take place in the same year of 1998. That makes sense. Pretty good. Uh, four takes place in 2004. Uh, oh wait, hold on. Yeah, okay. This timeline's a little confusing because they like they put the games in order of release and then like connect them to a different timeline that marks Choose when they take place character. but yeah uh, so those five games all take place in 98 Resident Evil 4 jumps all the way to 2004 yeah. Resident Evil 5 takes place between 2006 and 2009 uh, Revelations and uh, Revelations takes place in 2005 Bridging the gap uh, between four and five. Yeah. Resident Evil Six takes place in 2012 and 2013. Revelations Two takes place in 2011. And I assume, for lack of better like oh. explanation, seven and eight take place in modern day. Mm -hmm. Relative to when they came out. Feels so fucking stupid. Okay. Yeah. Why do you feel stupid? Because I was like, what did the toast do? And there's a like, thing called toasting. I'm like, oh, okay. What did the toes do? The what does the fox toast. say? Uh...
I don't know. Can, can I ask that random guy on TikTok who knows all about animals what the fox says? Would he would, would he justify a video for that? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, seven takes place mid 2017. Oh. And eight takes place in February of 2021. So yeah. They Shit! Take glad place we missed that part. <laughs> when they come out. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. You, know, you want to know why my character in Saints Row looks so awkward? Mm. He's tall. Ah. Uh, and I'm not. <laughs> you're. I'll say you're about average. I'm 5'9", so I'm a... Average. Just a little, I, I'm, a little, I'm a little short of average. Yeah. I mean, I hey, you know what? I'm no, tall. I'm taller. I'm taller than Tom Cruise. Wait, taller. I thought I was five nine. Am I six? I must be. Wait, hey, you're definitely not five. Nine. I'm not five. What the fuck am I? Kevin Roberts. Let me get my yardstick. <laughs> yeah, you are not five nine, Kevin. You are easily like six. Okay, four. it looks like I'm about six. Yeah. But, like, that means you're only an inch shorter than me. That's not possible. Well, I pulled, got the yardstick. Three Kevin, you're is about the length of my leg. Kevin, I am not an inch shorter than you. Look, I have the yardstick out, man. I don't know what else to tell you. Except that this yardstick's a little bit chewed by my dog. Holy shit, no! I'm, like, six. Or, like, five, nine. I'm, like, just under six. Kevin, you know there's two whole inches, right? This is a yardstick. <laughs> yeah, Kevin, it's 5'9", 5'10", 5'11", and then 6 foot. I fucking hate America. Why did we decide the feet system? <laughs> Who do I have to beat up? I'm being different. Who do I have to beat up to make it 10 inches instead of 12? Here's a better question, Kevin. How, how, how did you as an American not know that? Because I like meters, motherfucker. <laughs> wow, it must be very difficult to do literally anything yeah. requiring measurement. I'm just like, how does miles work? Like, what the fuck is going on? Uh, actually, so, five, how... to, five to five to close. Okay, but yeah, no, you're a hundred percent right. I remember why I got up now, but like, goddamn it. You know what? I was going to the bathroom, but now I feel like I have to defend myself for not for like not knowing this. See, this is this is like the standard loop. You and Kevin get into an argument about something stupid, where Kevin realizes he's wrong and feels the re need to rant about the fact that he doesn't understand why he's wrong. <laughs> Are we no, still recording? Like this, here's the thing: the real like, it's always bothered me. Why is it like twelve? Why is it like this? It's an even number. But like, why is it 12? That's what really oh, yeah. bugs me. It's I'm very still... arbitrary. Yeah. No, like everything's gonna... so much nicer if it's divisible by five. It would, but it's not. I know, but why? Way funnier that Kevin's had this. What's up? Real quick, uh, I'll be right back. For some reason, my room smells like wrong dog. Well, wasn't the dog there? Ask the question. Oh, <laughs> Buddy. <laughs> no, I saw that audio and it cracked me the fuck up. <laughs> uh, Is there a wrong dog in here? Oh, Buddy. fuck. <laughs> That's the question. Ken, are we still recording? Of course we are. Okay, cool. What are we feeling like, guys? Do we have the energy to try to do a control, tr control stream tonight? It's up to Kevin. I mean, I'll take a quick bathroom break and we can pull it up, yeah. I was going to say, I'll just go get a refill in my water. All right, yeah. short I'll intermission even... break. We'll do some control. Fuck it. This was multiverses, everybody. <laughs>